everything I love is there. You know, my mom's there. You know, all my my family. You know, so um, I like to stay close to family, even though I never see them because I'm always touring or in the studio. But um, that's the place I know. I was born and raised in Kansas City, Missouri, and um, that's my comfort zone. I moved out to LA outside of my comfort zone some years ago and came back to Kansas City. I'm glad I'm right there in the middle because that means all these years I've been getting music from every side, you know, from, from the south, from the east, from the west, everywhere, you know what I mean? Just right in the heartland, you know what I mean? And I'm just an explosion. No, 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 because I wanted to keep it a secret. You know, when people feel like you won the lottery, they call you, you know what I mean? <laughs> like cancel your Facebook and everything, you know what I mean? But uh, when you make that much money, I guess they have to report it, you know? And Forbes want to say, look what this guy did, 7.5 million this year, you know? And I was like, oh, don't say that, you know what I mean? But I'm proud of it. I mean, you know, that was bigger than the year before. We're steady on the incline, you know what I'm saying? We're steadily on the incline, and uh, it's a blessing to be able to do it um, independent you know, our own money and without major radio or video, you know, still on the Forbes list, like what? So, yeah, I wish they would have kept it a secret. They call it secret mogul, you know what I mean? But uh, there's no way you can keep that much money a secret, so. I do what I want. If I say, I want to put out a seven song EP for Halloween and it's like three months before Halloween, I can do it. I don't have to, consult with anybody, me and my partner, we'll talk about it, and he's like, let's go. If you think you can do it, let's go. If I got a, any kind of idea to do anything, a DVD or anything, I could just do it. I can name, uh, you, you gotta look at my my record covers, you know? He, Majors ain't about to put out a black dude on the cover with fiery crown, you know? <laughs> he's like, no, you might scare people. We get to do whatever the hell we want. And uh, that's the big thing about being independent. We can say, okay, we're gonna, um, schedule this tour and we're gonna take all our artists, you know what I'm saying? We're gonna pay for three buses and we're gonna, you know, really do it right, you know? We do it all in-house, man, you know what I mean? All of our uh, merchandise and everything. And it's a beautiful thing to be able to have control over everything. And I'm sure Macklemore feels the same way. Well, the independent grind is what we've been doing since we started, me and my partner Travis O'Gwen, man. Um, getting out there, uh, getting flyers out there to people in other towns that work for us, you know, street teams, posters, flats, everything, you know what I mean? Uh, that's the independent grind. We get out there, we don't have TV, you know what I'm saying, or radio, so this is our independent grind, this is what we're gonna do, we're gonna tour. Yeah, 75 dates with uh, Freddie Gibbs and Jaron Benton and Psych Ward Druggies and Big Chris Calico. It's gonna be wonderful, we've done it before. E-40 did one with me, you know, um, Glasses Malone. But this one, it's gonna be massive. A lot of people are excited about me, Freddie Gibbs, and Jaron Benton, and Psych Ward Druggies, and Chris Calico, so. That is the independent grind. We get out there and we tour. If you wanna be the hip hop president, that's what you gotta do. You gotta get out there and politic, and that's how we do, through touring. I'm a big fan of System of a Down. Been that way since I first heard Sugar. You know, that was the first song I ever heard from System. You know, Sugar, you know, I went, wow. You know, his style is just, so intricate, you know what I mean? Beautiful voices, distinctive, you know, and tribal at times. And uh, I was a fan of that, and I still am. And we finally got to work together, man. It was um, two rockers that I always wanted to work with, that's System of a Down and Slipknot. I've yet to work with Corey Taylor, but I will, you know. But Serge, it was wonderful to work with him. Uh, I, I really look up to him as a musician, and uh, I'm glad that he said yes. You know, he said he loved what I do. You know, the way I rhyme and things like that. He recognized it, the harmonies and everything, you know, from musician to musician, you know. He's like, thumbs up, Tech. And they did the video with me, just so calm and so zen, man. You know, I just, I feel the same way, but I think he's way more zen than I am, you know. He's like, I wanna get there, you know, to where I'm not worried about nothing, you know but who's, who knows? Their fusion of sounds between him, Jim Morrison, Robbie Krieger, Ray Manzarek, John Densmore, man. Their fusion of music and the sounds, everything, it just sounds so dark carnival, man. And that's so me, you know, the killer clown, you know. And um, I've been a fan of their music since, from back, since way back, from, I can't even remember when, you know. And um, I had no idea that I'd ever get the chance to work with them. 
right before Ray passed, we did this. I had no idea that he was sick or anything. I don't even know if he knew. I don't know. But we were drinking wine and everything in the studio, man. It was wonderful. John Densmore is so laid back. Robbie Krieger is cool as hell. I went to go visit Jim Morrison in Paris at Père Lachaise Cemetery in 2010. Told him thank you. I had no idea I was going to work with his homeboys. And uh, it was a dream come true because I named my label Strange Music because of their music. And uh, it's back when I was smoking weed, hella, you know. <laughs> um, I, I stopped smoking weed in 98, but uh, back then, you know, I was like really listening to the doors, really going in, you know. And you don't have to be high to listen to the doors, you know. You can just, right as in the storm, you can just, you know, lay back and chill, you know, on your bing bag and your uh, black, light, black light lit room, you know. Uh, or if you want to really get a little bit louder, five to one will do it, you know. I'm, I'm just a big fan, man, and to be able to work with them, it was a dream come true. Yeah, we've been playing it for a long time. I mean, my, Partner, we talk about it all the time. It's called the Dark Barbecue. It'll probably be a three-day thing. People will come in town, and one day it'll be Slipknot playing. The next night it might be Ice Cube and Brother Lynch and Tech Nine, and third night at Eminem. I don't know. <laughs> it just got to be humongous, you know, the Dark Barbecue and all. I don't want to really tell people because they'll try to take my idea, but I'll tell you anyway because I like to talk. Uh, <laughs> You have all the barbecue places in Kansas City, you know, set up and, you know, you know, Jack Stack over here, Oklahoma Joe's over here, Gates over here, Arthur Bryant's over here, you know, the Smokehouse over here, you know, just everybody, you know. You can sample the barbecue, you know, and you can sit down, they have places you can sit down and eat, you know, it's elaborate, man, but it takes place at night, you know, so. During the day, all the people that come to see these shows will be roaming the city, you know, so it'll be mayhem, you know, and that's what I like, so. Yeah, Dark Barbecue, man, hopefully we'll do it soon. It has to be in the summertime, though. <laughs>